Awesome. This is Elias here with Mike. Thanks for being on Extra Rounds Podcast, Coach Angelo. One of a small handful of repeat guests. That's right. Yeah, you're one of the few people we've had on in the last year multiple times. Well, you know, the last time we were all talking, I told you guys it was going to happen. <laughs> you did. did you did. You did call it. We were more skeptical, and you did call it. <laughs> I, I'm still trying to too, find too, too much money, guys. Too yeah, much you, money. I think that's exactly right. That's exactly right. We've been talking about all sorts of, uh, sorts of good and bad crap uh, um, uh, about this fight. We wanted to bring you in to talk really about the uh, about a lot of the technical components of it. I, we I, I we checked out your appearance on uh, our friend's show, uh, uh, MMA Junkie Radio, uh, and and we're gonna want to hit some of those same points um, and and maybe some some other ones. But yeah, we definitely want to want to shift to technique now. You know, like it's happened. We've got all sorts of controversy, but it's time to get expert opinion on technique here. Okay, let's uh, let's get right into it. <laughs> and, and by the way, just to make it fun, because I've I've I, you know I obviously when the fight got made, um, like the next day. Uh, I went into like four different shows and everybody was asking about the technical side. And, and I told them, I said, look, there's my opinion, but uh, just so that I can make it fun for everybody, I'll argue both sides. Uh-huh. That way, that way when, you, when you can argue both sides, that's what actually makes this fun. And, I, and I'll tell you, Elias, when um, I was at the Andre Ward fight um, uh, against Kobla, Yep. and I'll tell you how crazy, like, th- and this is why I knew it was going to happen. So I'm sitting on the on uh, on the floor side. They're pretty good seats. The people in front of us that were sitting while the fight was going on was talking about Mayweather McGregor. <laughs> now you're actually now you know, I want you to think about that for a second. You're at the Ward Kovalev fight, which I can argue to be one of the very best fights made this year. Yep. Certainly, Max Kellerman w- went out and said. Uh, in his opinion, Andre Ward is the best pound-for-pound fighter in the world. So let's say that in the world of boxing, you argue that Andre Ward is the best pound-for-pound fighter in the world, especially uh, during that fight he's fighting Kovalev. For the people in the front row on the floor to be talking about Mayweather McGregor during the best right. pound-for-pound fighter in the world, it's, it's insane. That's insane. We have a we have a 40-year-old um, retired boxer who hasn't been in in, in the sport in two years versus someone who's never even boxed before. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he, uh, when's the last time he fought? Eddie Alvarez versus... Uh, yeah, November. Is it the Eddie Alvarez fight? New York? Yeah. yeah. So New York. And we're in the middle of a, of Ward Kovalev 2 <laughs> and the people in the front row are talking about well, me with the It's such a It was it's such insane, a big right? announcement that I didn't get any flack for taking it like a some time out to read everything that was <laughs> happening on my honeymoon <laughs> and and to go a step further i didn't say this earlier but while that was all happening my wife booked a hotel for the fights in vegas that weekend well you both made so, great decisions yeah for, for one another i mean it's that big another. of a fight that she was like the honeymoon and she was like i understand do your do what that's you gotta awesome. do that's awesome coach wow, i got that's awesome so- I got oh, two God, questions God. for you, and I know Mike might might have some as well. He wants to go into. I okay, so I want to talk. I want to talk KO threat. I don't want to talk punching power per se. I want to talk about who's more likely to get the knockout. So in in their respective sports, certainly Conor McGregor is more known as a one shot power guy, right? Than 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 Floyd is. But I've been thinking, and I want to hear get your take on it. I think for a number of reasons. That Floyd Mayweather, even though he may not be a, as hard of a single-shot puncher for a number of reasons, including just boxing ability, timing, uh, you know, things of that nature, um, he's a much bigger KO threat in this fight, meaning Floyd Mayweather is a lot more likely, in my opinion, to get a knockout in this fight against Conor McGregor than McGregor is uh, to get one, even though he's more known for his power. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What are your thoughts on that? 100% correct. 100% correct. There's more chances of uh, Floyd Mayweather knocking out or getting the knockout um, versus Conor McGregor in a boxing match mm-hmm. than uh, Conor does. And 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 again, like we can have fun with it. And everybody, like I, I believe, like you guys said, Owen Rowdy 
went on uh, yeah. MMA Howard, right, his striking coach, and was like, I really believe it. And that's great, because if I was in that team, I'd have to believe it too. Because <laughs> right. I honestly can't believe that he could outbox Floyd. Yeah. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> so you pretty much cornered. If I was in, in, in the McGregor team, you kind of cornered me into thinking, well, how would we win this fight? Mm -hmm. um, controversial cheating decision, kind of like Pacquiao Bradley won. Hmm. Or <laughs> um, I just, you know, I knock, uh, we, we maybe can score a knockout yeah. with some weird, weird weirdness. Um, but, uh, but no, if, you know, we're calling this straight, through, uh, straight up. Uh, Floyd Mayweather will knock out Conor McGregor. Uh, I can't. I can't even think of a scenario where Conor could knock out Floyd. You know, because when you say, "Well, Conor has power," all right, four ounce gloves versus now ten ounce gloves. Um, and let's not forget again. And this is one of the key things that I keep bringing up. In boxing, you have to have the jab. And if you're fighting at the highest level and you don't have a jab then you're really going to be in trouble. And if you're fighting arguably one of the best fighters boxing's ever had, and you don't have a jab, you're really in trouble. Like, like I don't even understand the the you know like what style he's coming in there with mm. because unless you guys want to tell me which fight <laughs> actually showed uh, Conor McGregor in MMA in mixed martial arts showing a good dominant jab, can you guys name one fight like? Did he have a good dominant? I, I mean, again, I'd have to research back. So, so to be fair, it's not like I'm sitting there watching a ton of Conor McGregor tapes. Um, but, but did he have like a good dominant jab against anyone of recent? He was... I'm talking dominant. Where you can, can yeah. like, kind of like, like when you guys had Anna on the show, she talked about that dominant jab. Right. So I'm trying to think which fight did Conor show in MMA that shows he has a dominant jab. The Can you think of any? The jab's never really been a big weapon for him. He always, no. he leaves his lead hand out there, yeah. but he like does this like kind of pawing motion almost. It's like a gauging distance, disrupting what they're trying to do, creating openings for him to try and throw the left. Um, but no, right. he's never right. been one to yeah. use the jab. And you're, yeah. you're right, Anna, Anna Hulitson, she was talking about when she won her title fight that she won it basically only with the jab. Right. Right. Now, now the reason for that, guys, and again, just having to coach in both worlds, the reason for that and the reason why Conor is that dominant, and I've been saying this for years, and I don't know why I get so much hate about it, <laughs> is Conor's karate kicks are very good. So his kicks are his jab. So when he's throwing that nice little front kick at you, or if you decide to like go to his backside and then he, and then he sets yeah. you up for a spin and thrust kick, that's what that's what like for me if i'm in front of of connor and he's hitting me with the kicks i almost would rather like not get hit by the kicks mm -hmm. and maybe just you know like 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 either get a little closer or maybe get way far and then then connor starts to do what you what you talked about mike where he uses kind of like that front hand to sort of paw so he can get the range and then and then he throws his back hand and then he knocks people out, like Eddie Alvarez, you know, and, that, and that's how he gets it. He's not going to get a, a chance to kick uh, Floyd. So he still needs the starter weapon to set up his main weapon. So I'm wondering what, what he's going to do. He can't help him. He can grab, but then it's going to get broken up by the referee, which will most likely be Kenny Bayless. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, like, I, I mean, I can't see it. So, yeah, no, going – to, uh, what you were saying, Elias, um, yeah, no, uh, Floyd's going to knock him out. Now, that's, that's what <laughs> now, one of the people watching on the Facebook live stream have, has a question uh, they wanted to ask you. His name is Waylon, um, and I, I didn't hear this, so I don't know if this is accurate or not, but he says, do you believe that Connor will now use the Superman punch since he found out it is completely legal? I don't know if it is or isn't. I hadn't heard that, but what what is your thoughts on that? It usually isn't, so. Um, Superman punch. I mean, I, I again, man. I I'm, that seems I'm ridiculous. I'm still trying to figure out how Connor is gonna get by. I I mean, I think if Connor, I, I know you guys have that one guy who said he's gonna do something crazy, like dance around naked <laughs> and city hall. If uh, if Connor wins a round, I, I if I, I if I could please suggest them, don't say um, don't don't make the bet because it's possible Connor can at least win one round. Because uh, Floyd will tend to kind of watch what you're doing first 
it, to gauge your speed, gauge your distance. Floyd has never been the type of guy to just jump right off the gate and start throwing punches at you. So it's extremely possible, guys, that Connor can win maybe the first round, mm. <laughs> you know, um, just on on uh, Floyd watching him and maybe even like the first two rounds. So if uh, your guy that's making that bet, maybe his bet should be <laughs> like, I'll bet Connor doesn't win more than nine rounds. <laughs> like, like that would yeah, be I mean, much, uh, much more reasonable. A bet for him. I want to end that. Yeah, staying on the sorry. Superman punch for a second. Coach, jump in if, if you want here. I mean, if unless I'm mistaken, I mean, something that, that maybe, maybe our listener was or wasn't thinking about but a lot of times the any type of superman punch it's like a stutter punch you can do it with uh, with the lead you can do it with the cross but but uh it's really it's set up with leg kicks so if you're looking at the lower body if i'm if you're doing like a tie right. especially like a tie low uh, low kick where i'm like stepping out with my lead leg a, a little bit and lifting up my rear leg to come if i'm landing that low kick that roundhouse uh, uh to your lead leg a couple times now the next time you see my leg mo- lift up instead of Instead of the kick coming, I switch and I come over the top with a punch, and he's not going to be able to set up a Superman punch. I mean, maybe he can still land it, but all that is is not being on two feet in a in a boxing match, which is very very dangerous. Yeah, no, you're out. See, you guys, you guys know this. You you, you guys know this already. You said it exactly correct. Without the kicks, um, it makes it I mean Connor has to play boxing, and boxing is position, uh, uh, footwork. Um, and then your hands, you know, and, and, and that's, and, and, and it's like, it's one of these things where is Connor athletic enough to get into the sport of boxing? Yes. 100%. Is he athletic enough to do it in eight weeks and come up with an amazing game plan mm. to beat someone who's never lost before? And mm-hmm. we're talking name the list and you could even like you could you could everybody always goes well yeah when he beat Pacquiao it was fastest time that Pacquiao would knock him out right now that's the <laughs> same Pacquiao who, who who's fighting Jeff Horn July 1st yeah. and that Manny Pacquiao will knock out Conor McGregor mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is it possible Conor knocks out Pacquiao sure I mean I guess anything is possible but I wouldn't bet on it <laughs> you know like I, I wouldn't I wouldn't sit there and go Oh yeah, I'll make an argument for that. Like every argument you make for Conor McGregor winning a boxing match against Floyd Mayweather is like the argument about you know Bigfoot existing. You know, like, <laughs> like it's, it's it's one of these things where where yeah, it's fun. We're gonna talk about it. Yay! <laughs> you know, what if Shaq could shoot the three as good as Steph Curry? Yay! You know, but like. At the end of the day, come on, man. You guys already know. You're already even – every question that goes you guys' way, you're able to answer it because you already know what's going to happen, mm-hmm. which is what makes this fight so amazing is that it's like when they asked me at Junkie Studios, would you still pay for it? I'm like, yes, I would pay for this. <laughs> I would 100% pay <laughs> to watch this because even though we know the answer, it's still going to be a fun process to watch. It's still going to be fun. You're one step ahead of me. I'll, I'm going to watch it. I am not going to pay to watch it. So, <laughs> for... Oh, come on. See, now, you're saying that nine weeks out. Okay, nine weeks of every day, everyone talking about this. So, for those fans... I like you don't have to, unless you don't have to pay for it, of course. That's true. I, I'll get away with that. We did have another interesting rule uh question here and i'm looking it up i think that's well, we, what mike hunt's supposed to you well we've actually have a lot of people chiming in with questions and thoughts uh to this to this uh co- to this interview so um there's getting a lot of response but i i wanted before we kind of dive into some of those things maybe for those who don't necessarily understand the difference that the gloves will make on the fight could you explain that to the cas like mm-hmm. the casual fan watching sure um so they're fighting at 154 which is uh so from 147 on down you wear eight ounce gloves and then uh, the next weight level is called junior middleweight. Um, so uh, then you fight to 10-ounce uh, gloves. Uh, and 10-ounce gloves are what's used also for heavyweight boxing. Um, so when you guys watch Klitschko versus uh, Joshua, those were 10s. Um, so, uh, but just the, gl- the gloves itself, it's, um, 
it's a weapon and a defense that you could use also. So the fact that you have bigger gloves, and, and again, this is okay. So um, Elias, you train in, in martial arts, and I believe uh, uh, you, you said you even tried out for the Ultimate Fighter, right? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I did. Time. Yeah, I've, I've fought a little bit as an amateur. Right. No, no, no. I know. Like recently, you just won a match, right? I did. Yeah. 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 So that so that's awesome. So when you spar. Do you spar with small gloves or do you spar with bigger gloves? Mix it up. Back in the day, we used to just do um, when we just started like trying to trying to trying to train for MMA seriously. Maybe like 10, 11 years ago, it would basically be like kickboxing with takedowns, um, and that's good. Okay. You can go you can go harder, but then it's it gives you a little false sense of security with covering. But now a lot of times when we try to mix in coaches at some like really light timing sparring rounds with the small gloves because we don't want to get real dependent on, 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 on the cushion and, and, and the blocking that we might think is there with the big ones. So try to mix it up. Right. Right. But when you have sparred with the bigger gloves yeah. and you're going full out, mm. you found that at times to kind of save you a little bit, it's a little bit easier to just put your hands up and 100%. let them hit the gloves. Right? 100%. hundred yeah, percent. And that's what it would happen. So that's what I'm talking about is like a lot of times for, for the listeners who want to now start rewatching a lot of Floyd's fight and every, you know, and again, man, be fair. Like, don't, don't be so emotional about it. Cause you're a Connor fan. Just be <laughs> fair. Because if you start to tell me, Oh, well, Connor McGregor did this to Dennis Seaver. Okay. Then watch the same exact fight that Floyd Mayweather did around that same exact timeline. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. that, so that when I start to say to you, Hey, if you watch um, uh, Floyd Mayweather against Sean Bay Mitchell, you won't look back at me and go, well, that was like, 20 years ago when <laughs> Floyd was 15, you know, like, no, man, you can't, you gotta just compare apples to apples then. If you're going to go back in timeline, then go back. And what you guys will start to notice when you watch those Floyd Mayweather fights is the gloves, it's a defense, it's, mm. it's a weapon that you can use for defense mm. also. So the fact that it's bigger, Connor's not going to be able to get away with just hitting Floyd the way you guys saw him hit Eddie Alvarez. Will it mitigate you know? I mean, his... even like, like yeah, like look at someone like Nate Diaz, right? When he fought Nate Diaz, and this is, and believe me, guys, I got a lot of like, like, ah, oh, you're crazy. You thought Nate Diaz won the second fight, oh, he and won I it. was like, I'm not the only <laughs> one. I'm not the only one. Eddie Bravo went on and said he thought, you know, Nate Diaz won the second fight. But in a in a fight like when you saw him, uh, when you saw Nate fight him the first time, and you saw Nate fight him uh, the second time, you even saw Nate do a shoulder roll, mm. and they're using four ounce gloves. What do you think Floyd's going to do? See, you know, like the the guy who's mastered the shoulder roll, and here we are, we're fighting with 10 ounce gloves. Like, man, yeah. the percentage just really dropped of, of how Connor's going to get it through now. So you know? There's a speak. Mike pointed out a question to me that we got on there about the back fist. It, it, so, uh, someone asked, right, Mike? I don't know yeah, who it was. George uh, Berzinski asked, is the spinning back fist legal? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, coach, but no, I don't, no, I don't remember back fist ever being you legal. spin at all. Say that again. Yeah, no, no, you can't, you can't, you can't spin at all. You can't even turn around um, in boxing, so that you you cannot do a spinning back knuckle of any sort. But you can't even turn around. So and you can't. If I'm boxing Elias yeah. and he's hitting me, and I start to That's turn timidity. around, kind of like what happened to that glory, right. that glory fight guy, and then he got knocked out because he turned around. Yeah. Right away, usually the referee comes in between, and then he says, "Hey, man, I'm giving you a warning because you turned around." If you do it again, I'm mm -hmm. taking away a point. So, um, so no, you can't turn around at all. And so what it's a, not going to be a spinning elbow. Without the spinning, spinning back knuckle, those are illegal. Without the spinning, the back fist is illegal too, though. Just just a regular back fist would be illegal, wouldn't it? Just, oh, oh, yes, yeah. Right? Yeah, no, oh, okay, yes. Uh, the back fist is illegal, yeah. but um, we've seen Ali get away with it. Uh, um, Manny Pacquiao gets away with it a lot. Um, so, you know, but I really don't think that's going to matter. I mean, if we're going to, if we're going to sit there and go, well, you know, I could throw back this. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't see him doing it that much anyways in MMA, but if he tried it on Floyd, um, Floyd fought a guy by the name of Manny Pacquiao just recently. <laughs> and, um, <Who>? Manny's pretty <laughs> good at doing that little back fist trick and he didn't beat Floyd Mayweather, you know? So, um, so yeah, but it is uh, it, it is illegal, but a lot of people get away with it. Mm. Especially you know if if you're watching it, we call we call it open stance. Uh, but if you when you have a southpaw uh, fighting a conventional fighter, 
you face the same direction, your, your bodies face the mm. same direction. So it's a little bit easier to go to the uh, inside alias mm. and then kind of just throw your hand out. Uh. And, and even though you and I know that as a back fist, um, every, you know, if you're, if you're the wraps, depending on the angle that you're in, it looks like I'm just throwing a regular job, uh. but really I was throwing a back fist. Um, so a back fist is illegal, but you get, you know, I mean, we, you know, a lot of times we get away with it. Interesting. But, you know, Oh, we did it a lot too. So that's a good point. I I had one more my own self. I wanted to get this in because I'm very curious, Coach. And everyone, I see a lot of people out there on Facebook, blah blah blah. Just fans are excited. Maybe they're MMA fans. Uh, they're talking about Mayweather running during his fights. I I I, I don't see him running. I mean, he's a he's I don't, a, he, I don't th- yeah. He's a, I, I he's a defensive fighter. Anyway. He's he's in fact he's he's gotten I coach I've never done anything to the level of McGregor at UFC two. <laughs> well, that's very true. He didn't literally run, but he and he's even more economical as he's gotten older with his footwork. Like he's he doesn't he doesn't move his feet uh, uh, around very much. He doesn't run like that's not his defensive style. So it sounds like you agree with us. Like, do, can you can you explain yeah, why no. his defense is not running? Okay, so so again, the point. art of boxing, and we say this, you know, when I'm teaching people, I explain this to them. Um, you guys have heard this over and over. The art of boxing is the art of hitting your opponent without getting hit yourself. So how is that running? We, yeah. I, you, you know, first of all, you can't run in a square. <laughs> I think it's more become a loose terminology because they're so frustrated about the fact that no one seems to catch up to Floyd Mayweather's timing or Floyd Mayweather's speed. So that would be like me being upset at Usain Bolt for doing what Usain Bolt does. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't make sense. It's, it's like, guys, this is boxing. And by the way, this is boxing at the highest level. And in fact, he's so effing good, he's doing it when he's 40. Yeah. You know, like, this is crazy. This is insane. And, and that's, that's why when, when we go back to, and everybody will go, Oh, Andre Berto this, Andre Berto that. In fact, Andre Berto's been uh, on, on TMZ a lot talking about this because he was the last fighter to face um, Floyd. What I always say is that's probably the best version of Andre Berto for me that I've ever seen. And Floyd, it, it looked like how Steph Curry made LeBron look hmm. on that one um, on that one it. layup uh, <laughs> sequence, right? So, I, so for me, I'm just kind of like, Man, you know, if Floyd's doing that to Andre Berto, I mean, like, if Andre Berto fought Conor McGregor in a fight, and I know Andre always says they're friends, but if uh, Andre Berto went in a boxing match against Conor McGregor, I'd pick Andre Berto 10 times out of 10. <laughs> you know, and that was Andre Berto. So, and we saw what Floyd did to Andre mm-hmm. Berto. So, that, that, so yeah, no, man. Um, I, I just, it, 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 it's just hard. Again, it will be fun for the next nine weeks to do the whole Bigfoot talk. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're going to see what we're going to see. And really, unless someone, unless there's like some awesome leak tape of Conor McGregor sparring Carl Frotch in England. And it was like leaked, you know, kind of like the Duke basketball UNLV tape got leaked, you know. And, and then, and then, um, and then uh, we see like Connor like knocking down Carl Frosch. I'd be like, nah, man, this is this is a, this is fun to talk about, but what what everybody's gonna pay for is, um, you know, uh, Connor pretty much getting whooped on in boxing. But it'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> Now, uh, we've unfortunately reached the end of the show, but you have a lot going on in your world. You're not just a coach. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of let everybody who's watching or going to listen later on the podcast when it's uploaded to iTunes and wherever, where they can follow you. You have your show, Cage Siders. Um, so just kind of let everybody know how they can keep up with you. Yeah, no, um, uh, for all you guys who, uh, you know, every, every week we do a radio podcast in Vegas, and also it's a TV show in Vegas. It's called uh, The Cage Siders. Uh, it's with me and my colleague, Jeremy Long. Um, we, you guys could just look it up at uh, cagesiders.com uh, and uh, check it out. We just did an episode with uh, Scott Coker. We just talked to him about Mayweather McGregor. He actually mentioned maybe, uh, maybe if he does a Bay Area 
promotions at ATT Park, we could see Chael Sonnen against Andre Ward. He, he was say, <laughs> saying it, of course, jokingly. But uh, um, so we just had Scott Coker, and then we just had uh, Scott Kent on our television show that'll air uh, this Friday, um, and you guys could check that out on the KateSiders.com also. And Scott Kent, as you guys know, is the uh, the president of Lion Fight Muay Thai, and uh, it was interesting because we talked to him about how Chris Cyborg went into a five-round Muay Thai title fight against Jarena Bars, and Chris Cyborg, who's the baddest woman on the planet, she lost the Muay Thai fight. But in an MMA fight, Cyborg wins like 100 times out of 100. She would destroy Jarena Bars. But again, same rule set on same rule set in a different sport. You need time to acclimate to that. you know. And, and even as athletic and as amazing as, uh, as Chris Cyborg is, she still lost the fight in, in where uh, Jarena Bars, who is an expert in that field, um, she was able to, to beat Cyborg. You know, um, and, and again, if, if Cyborg were to fight her again, maybe, you know, the gap gets a little closer. Or if Cyborg was training in, in Muay Thai, just straight up Muay Thai all the time for the next, you know, uh, couple of years or, or a year, then, yeah, maybe. But, you know, in that match, if you guys want to rewatch it, it it's, I think it's on Lion Fight. Um, you can watch how Chris Cyborg went into a Muay Thai fight and against the uh, Muay Thai champion. Muay Thai on Muay Thai, she lost. So it was kind of fun to get Scott, uh, Scott Kent's take on it because we asked him about Malapet, and we said, well, Malapet weighs 147, but if Malapet went up to, let's say, 155 and were to fight Conor McGregor in a five-round uh, Muay Thai fight, who would win? And he said Malapet would win. Um, so, you know, it's, it, and that's essentially what Conor's doing is he's jumping into the sport of boxing and he's trying to slay the dragon. You know, and the the what is it the the famous line is forty nine have tried and forty nine have failed, so uh, so yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, join us and talk a little Mayweather McGregor. I'm sure we'll probably have to have you on one more time before the fight as we get closer. Yeah, no, definitely, and, and congratulations, Mike. Um, I got to check out those pictures. Uh, <laughs> Leah said those those uh, honeymoon pictures are awesome. And then, uh, hey, Elias, I didn't know you were opening a gym. That's awesome. Oh, thanks, Congratulations on, uh, on that. And, uh, yeah, no, I'll, 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 if I get to go to Chicago you better. Uh, anytime, once it's open, I definitely want to uh, check the place out. That's really awesome. And are you getting ready for a fight coming up? Uh, I, you know, nothing announced, but uh, I'm hoping for. Well, now we can kind of announce. I have no opponent, but we're hoping. For, I'm hoping to train this summer. Breaking news. Yeah, and we're hoping to fight in November. There's a local card in November. Uh, I, I, if we get the right, if we get a good opponent, uh, so I'm hoping. MMA or November. grappling? MMA. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully in November. So we shall see. Okay, cool. Well, when you, if you make it out here to Vegas, Mike, you'll probably come to Vegas, right? But if you, Elias, if you make it out to Vegas, don't forget, man. You and I, we got to get together. I, I absolutely. I'm not. Next time I'm in Vegas, I'm, you're gonna know about it a month in advance, and we're gonna train. And anytime you come out to Chicago, we got your back. I'm gonna get you a chair right here. Absolutely. Cool. cool. Thanks so cool. much, Thank Coach. Thank you, guys. That was fun. Sure Thanks, was. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Bye.